I really don't like pictures of myself. So the video camera back there is a bit of a challenge. But um, there is a picture of myself that I love. And it's a picture of me as a little kid, about three years old, in a pink party dress. And I'm standing next to an old man with a white beard. He's holding my hand. And in front of us, on the bed, is an open volume which is a Talmud. He's got a twinkle in his eye, and he's my great-grandfather, Zaidi Tabachnik, a man who was an immigrant from Kovna, Lithuania, and who was also the rabbi of a small congregation in the Bronx. I can't say that I remember him that well, but the stories that I know about him and the lessons that I learned are incredibly vivid for me. He taught me about unconditional love. He taught me about the love of our texts and our traditions. He taught me about the love of the Hebrew language and the land of Israel. He was also a man of deeply held values. He wrote an ethical will that he left for his children. And I remember that my grandmother had it framed on her wall. Another really important part of this picture is where it was taken, in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, where I lived until I was 12. And that community was where my grandmother's family had helped to build a tight-knit Jewish community that embraced me. And I was surrounded by family. And so that feeling of small town that I took from Woonsocket, and the lessons that I learned from my, gran my great-grandfather, Zadie Tabachnik, were the things that I thought about in terms of my own legacy and what I wanted to pass down to my children. Now, nowhere in that picture was philanthropy. My Zadie was not a philanthropist. He was a man of very modest means. He, of course, gave Tzedaka to help the needy in his community. In fact, I know that my great-grandmother felt that he gave away too much. <laughs> but he was no philanthropist. And considering myself to be a descendant of his, I didn't consider myself to be a philanthropist either. When I thought of philanthropists, the image that popped into my head was Andrew Carnegie or maybe Rothschild, or Bronfman, or Wexner, but not me. They were men. They were among the wealthiest men of their times. They were industrialists, businessmen, masters of the universe. I was a woman. I came to New York to build a career. I was wary of money and its values. And as I started to have children and think about what I wanted them to be, I didn't want them to be materialistic. I didn't want them to feel entitled. I wanted to, them to be kind and decent humans, giving people, loving humans and Jews. But I found that I automatically, very naturally, started to get involved in building the Jewish community in New York, literally building. I joined a synagogue that needed a building. So we built one, and I helped. <laughs> I then helped to build a, a building for the Jewish community high school that my children attended, and I helped to establish the high school in the first place. And then later went on to build another building that would house the expanded lower school. And I found that over time, my passion was really for this work, for finding the opportunities to engage more Jews in finding the deep meaning and purpose that exists in our Jewish tradition in Jewish life. It became my mission. In fact, it became my day job. And 
little by little, I also found that with each effort and with each new experience that I had in this work, that I got closer to this idea of actually being a philanthropist. And I should say that also, as our resources grew, I was able to make contributions to the enterprises that I was involved in. But I also learned that philanthropy is not just about how much, although of course that's hugely important, as anybody sitting in this room knows. It's also about the why and the what and the how. And I know that my children understand that. They've watched me. They've watched what I've been involved in. They've watched what I, how I've spent my time. But now that I've gotten more comfortable with owning the idea of philanthropy, become more authentic about it as part of me, as part of my legacy and who I am, I want them to be a part of it too. So last fall, I took my daughter, Ariel, to Israel with me, not on a trip, but on a, I would say, an extended but very quick trip to understand, to meet with the different people who I've funded, supported, organizations who are doing great work on the ground that has been compelling to me so that she could understand what was driving me, but more importantly, so that she could ask her own questions, make her own judgments, and start on a path herself. So I don't know whether I'll have the privilege of knowing my great-grandchildren. Right now, I'm only hoping for grandchildren. <laughs> but I do hope that philanthropy will be part of the picture and part of the legacy that I leave for the generations that follow me. Thank you.